This is my favorite Sichuan hot pot. The recipe is actually from this old 1972 Cultural Revolution era cookbook, like the sort that's complete with Maoist revolutionary quotes and everything. It's a throwback to an older, simpler style Sichuan hot pot back when it was more of a street food for the Chongqing working class. And, I think, for home cooks around the world today, it might just be a bit more relevant of a style to make in your own kitchen. Because, like, if you wanted to whip up a proper modern restaurant-style Sichuan hot pot from scratch, you would need to, and this is courtesy of the excellent Wang Gang, soak a bunch of dried chilies, mince them into a fine paste, blend together cinnamon, star anise, fennel seed, black cardamom, white cardamom, and some recipes go even crazier. Soak some more chilies, melt on some tallow, use that to deep fry a bunch of aromatics, then deep fry that chili paste, deep fry that chili, and then, of course, continue to deep fry some chili bean paste, ginger, bay leaf, docher, the spices, Sichuan pepper, fermented rice, baijiu liquor... And then all of that is step one, making a base. Then step two to actually make a pot is then to shallow fry all that, fry with more aromatics, more chilies, hit it with beef stock, and then finally season. All of that is obviously insanely delicious. It's also a total nightmare. But that whole deal is just the modern restaurant version. And it didn't always used to be that way. You see, in the late 1800s, the city of Chongqing was a sort of transportation hub, connecting trade on the Yangtze River with the salt mines and breadbasket of Sichuan. Now, there's always been this sort of fluvial toughness to the upper reaches of the Yangtze, like a major industry in the area was something called La Xian, where teams of men would literally pull boats upstream with their bare hands. And it's around the docks in the poorer section of town, Jiangbei, where Chongqing Hapa is thought to have gotten its start, to feed those working-class Xianfu and Bangbang that only had a couple coins in their pocket. Its original name was actually Shui Ba Kwai, or Eight Piece Water, where you could get eight pieces of water buffalo, not the more expensive beef, for just one coin, and boil it right there on the street in your section of a spicy divide of broth. It got so popular that from there, on the other side of the river, people began to open up small restaurants, and the dish slowly started to morph into hot pot. And through the early 20th century, it spread to Chengdu, points elsewhere in Sichuan, and even Shanghai and Beijing. But that mid-20th century version wasn't quite the same thing as hot pot today. Instead of a mala smorgasbord of spices, flavor leaned instead on chili bean paste and fermented soybeans. Even as late as 1985, the classic Sichuan cookbook Da Zhong Chuan Tsai had this kind of hot pot inside. And while it's not clear, our guess is that what we know of as Sichuan hot pot today was likely born out of the Jianghu Tsai style Sichuan restaurant explosion throughout China in the 80s and 90s. So then, the reason why I think this older version might actually be better for home cooks like us is twofold. First, the production is actually a good bit more streamlined and I think might fit better inside of a home kitchen. And second, the eating, which is a little less gastronomical SM session and a bit more soothing of a complete everyday meal. So then, let's go into detail on each in turn. So, to get started with old school Sichuan hot pot, as always, first, Long Yao. Get your wok piping hot, shut off the heat, and add in the oil. Here, 100 grams of beef tallow. If you don't have tallow, Sichuan Caizio, unrefined rapeseed oil, is another traditional choice. And peanut oil or lard would be untraditional but still tasty. Let that melt, and then over a medium-low flame, add in 60 grams of minced pixian doubanjiang, chili bean paste. Patiently fry that paste for seven or eight minutes, or until the tallow is good and stained, and the bean paste turned a deeper color of red, like so. Then toss in 25 grams of minced ginger, together with 15 grams of minced docher, Chinese fermented black soybeans. Fry those for about three minutes, or until that minced ginger is cooked through and dried up a touch, and then go in with a good slug of chili powder. This was just five grams of a mild, fragrant Sichuan bullet chili, blended together with 10 grams of a spicy Sichuan millet chili. You can use any combination of fragrant and spicy chilies that you have local to you, though. For example, if I was in the U.S., I might go guajillo for the former and Thai bird's eye for the latter. So then, just toss that in together with 5 grams of the nicest Sichuan peppercorn that you can find, 
mix well, then add in 50 grams of Lao Tzu for minted rice. If you're unfamiliar with Lao Tzu, it's a sweet fermented rice that should be available at pretty much any Asian supermarket. Another name for it is Jiunyang, and similar products also exist in Japan and Korea as well. So just toss that in, drizzle around another half tablespoon of Shaoxing wine, and then mix and fry that all together for a couple of minutes, or until everything is good and combined. So then, now just transfer all that over to your eating hot pot. And for this amount, we'll add in three cups of stock at first. This here was a Chinese-style beef stock, which is traditional for the dish. And we'll have a simple recipe for you down in the description. But for this, really, use whatever stock you have. Chicken, beef, we even used shrimp one test and it was pretty good. Western style would also be fine as long as you didn't go insane with the herbs. And push comes to shove, water plus bouillon powder would also be okay in the context of this much flavor. Just get that all up to a boil. Season with a quarter teaspoon salt, quarter teaspoon MSG, and a half tablespoon chicken bouillon powder. And then this is good to serve. So there's three reasons here why we are such big fans of this style. First and foremost, this pot is designed to be eaten alongside rice, and it's a great way to eat a lot of rice. Usually at hot pot restaurants these days, the focal point always tends to be on the meat and that's how you usually get full. For this, you take the stuff from the hot pot and you eat it in one bite along with the rice, or alternatively kind of bounce it off and eat bites interchangeably. So as such, if you wanted, if you were feeling ambitious, you could also pair this meal with more great over rice dishes. For example, the kind of fare in our ongoing over rice recipe series. Second, there's also this whole sort of fun ritual behind how you eat it. Usually, you'd find the pot served alongside green garlic in Chongqing, or scallion, our preference actually, in Chengdu. What you'd do then is then boil those herbs in with the soup, and when you grab a piece of beef or tripe, you grab it together with that scallion. Then you'll dip that all in some toasted sesame oil mixed with MSG. And then that is how the meat is enjoyed, together, of course, with rice. Which brings us to third thing. As you might have picked up already, there's actually not an insane amount of chilies here. Now, everybody's spice tolerance is different. I personally love spicy food, but I'm not exactly Sean Evans or Mark 20 Chili Som Dom Wiens. While the extremes of the Scoville scale might be fun for me every once in a while, I guess I'm just not that Junko way. For a normal everyday meal, I like normal spicy. So to me, this pot starts off as a flavorful mild and then strengthens down to comfortable medium as it bubbles and reduces. Definitely do adjust according to your own tolerance, but for a day-to-day -day meal, I do think that that can be a pretty good goal. So besides the uh, beef and tripe that we talked about in the video, we also really strongly recommend that you put some daikon and potato in because it absorbs the sauce amazingly and then it works as like a little spicy, tasty pouch for your rice. Uh, also, besides that, we also really recommend brains and marrow. They are also really, really tasty. Besides all of this, you can also check out our Hot Pot 101 video for more ideas. And of course, the recipes will be in the description box. Thank you for everyone that's supporting us on Patreon. And of course, subscribe for more Chinese cooking videos. 